All right, so let's look at making a ring like this today. What's interesting is I'll show you a quick way of adding in these prongs, the split prongs, and how to get the shank to curve underneath the actual seat of our gem. All right, let's start. So this is made with Grasshopper Gold Tools. For those of you who don't have it, it's a free plug-in for Rhino. So I'm picking the gem. I just choose the largest oval they got. Then using the box edit tool, I'm going to get the exact measurements of the stone. All right, now that the stone is the right size, I can pick the ring rail. So USA, 5.75. And now the ring rail, I'm going to offset it 1.1 millimeters. So curve offset, put in 1.1, click outside the circle. All right, so the gem comes with a curve, so I'm going to ungroup it so I can get the curve. Move the stone up, and there is my curve that was made when we created the gem. And I want to move it to the default layer. So I'm going to go to my default layer, right click and change object layer. All right, so this curve is the right size, but I need to be a half a millimeter smaller. So I'm just going to move it up, go to box edit, and just make it a half a millimeter smaller in diameter. So let's go down to 11. and enter. All right, move that up to roughly where it's going to sit. So it's a half a millimeter smaller so that when I look down on the top, I don't see the seat underneath our stone. So I'm just drawing a line straight down from the edge of the curve I made, two mils. Then I'm going to rotate it, rotate tool, and just curve it just a little bit in. All right, so that's where the top bezel will be now I want to add the bottom in but I want to create the right taper so I'm going to uh, select the point type in zero enter and that will place a point right at zero and I want this moved up uh, halfway up and then halfway again so that's the halfway and halfway between that again all right so now all I need to do is create an arc between the bottom of my line and the point. Okay. So now I can pick both these, join them, type in join and enter. So now I'm ready to create a surface that will give me both the top seat and the bottom ring rail seat. So go to surface rail revolve and I pick the curve zero enter and enter again now I need to cap this I type in cap and it's now a solid then I can remove the inside ring rail and now I want to wire cut this so type in wire cut my line to wire cut okay and now I need to split off the top seat so I'm drawing a line I'm coming down 1.7 so minus 1.7 and now I can wire cut this as well Pick the inside and I delete it. All right, so now we can add on our prong. So it is a, a double prong. And what I do is I just create a surface exactly where the prongs will be. So let's go looking down from the top view. I'm going to draw a circle the size of my prongs. So draw a circle. 1.3 will be the prong diameter. 1.3. And I'm just going to move 
the circle to where the prong will intersect the stone. So copy, paste, because it's a double prong. And you want the, the surface of the prong to be go roughly about a third of the, of the way into your circle. Okay, now the gap between the prongs is up to you, whether you want them further apart or closer together. So I'm just tweaking it a bit. All right, so that's where my prongs will be. Okay, now I'm going to create a, a surface. And I create the surface because it helps me line up the vectors of my prongs exactly where they're meant to be. So, interpolate curve tool, I'm going to start to just draw where the prongs will be and how they will sit. Okay, I want to line these up, picking zero, enter. And now I'm going to split this curve. Just get it, I'm going to split this curve, go to split, with a point, um, split it just past, just before the halfway point. Okay, now I can do a rail revolve again. So let's hide that bezel away. And now I can do another rail revolve. Enter from zero, enter and enter again. This I can cap. Actually, this I don't have to cap. So I'm going to draw a straight line from zero out through my prongs. Repeat the command again from zero out through my prongs. Okay, let's grab both those lines and I'm going to extrude them up. Actually, let me show you how this works. Let me do that again. So if you select your curves, you'll notice there's a little dot, a blue dot. If you click on the dot and you move your mouse upwards, you can actually extrude a curve. Okay. So now all I need is an intersect point where both these surfaces intersect so i pick the three surfaces i type in the word intersect and i get a curve exactly where i want the curve to actually be so let's delete all these surfaces and there i have my two prongs so i'm going to pipe them type in the word pipe starting from the bottom the diameter is one at the top 1.3 Let's pick the other curve and repeat the command. Pipe, one millimeter, 1.3. Well, there we go. So I can now scale this if I want to, make it a little bit smaller. If I feel it's sticking out too far, just grab the green handle and scale it in the X direction only. All right, so now I can grab my prongs I'm just tweaking that angle so I selected the outside of that bezel and I just scaled it a bit smaller so I mirrored the prongs across Y pick the prongs again and I'm going to mirror them, transform mirror around X. Okay, we don't need these curves. I'm going to go and delete these curves. And now I can start to work on the shank. So pick a straight line, pick the bottom of the shank, make sure your snapping is on. 
Let's go down 1.8. Oops, I think that's too many. Let's redo this. Yeah. So I'm just going to redraw it. I want it to be 1.8. Type in 1.8. The side, I want a line going out straight, 2.2. .2. And I can use uh, the arc tool to join these two lines up. Click the bottom, top, hold shift, go all the way out to my left and click. So that line I don't need. And let's finish the shank off now. So I'm going to start tangent, pick the end of the line, click. And then I'm going to snap underneath the seat. I'm going to join these two. Join the curves into one. I'm going to rebuild the surface. So type in rebuild. <coughs> and we want nine points. Okay, let's grab our node. I'm just going to twist the shank so it lines up with the surface of the seat. Okay, now I want a dupe edge. I want the bottom of this seat. So I type in dupe edge. I pick the line that runs around the bottom of that seat. Enter. Let's hide that away. And now I'm ready to do a one rail sweep. So I go to surface, sweep one. I pick the curve we just made. Enter. And this shape I have to cap, so type in the word cap. And then using the ring cutter, I can cut the inside of the ring rail away. All right, so now I can trim the shank to the width that I want the shank to be. So I want it to be a tapered shank. Okay, I'm going to mirror this, just move it into line, transform, just get into line, then I'm going to mirror, transform, mirror, across the y-axis, then I'm going to draw in a line between the two curves I just made, and I'm going to join them, because y-cut only works with one line. All right, let's go back to shaded, and now I'm going to type in wire-cut. I'm going to pick the curve that we just made and pick the line. Now I can pick the two surfaces that I don't need and I'm going to delete them. All right, I just need to cut the inside of the shank out. So let's see how we do that. So I'm grabbing those lines. I'm going to go to isolate, typing the word isolate. And actually, I needed more. I needed the outside line as well. So let me just undo that and hide that away. So go to hide. Let's pick that curve. We're going to offset this curve uh, 1.7. So entering 1.7. I'm picking that line. I'm going to transform mirror across the y axis. And then I'm going to join a line snapping from the end point, holding shift. I can pick that line, the two lines we just made, and the ring section. Go to curve tools, go to curve boolean, and then I'm going to pick the inside shape that we just made. All right, now I need to extrude this. So if I click on the blue dot, I can extrude out a surface. Sorry about that. My dogs needed to go out. So it's got a curve. Extrude curve. Does the same thing. Let's bring back the shank. 
So now I can do a Boolean difference, select the shank, and I cut away the opening. All right, so this shank now I just need to split in half. So I'm just going to draw a line starting from zero. Long line all the way down. I'm going to use this line as a wire cut to cut my shank. So I pick my shank, type in wire cut. Pick the line I just made, enter, enter. Pick the parts we don't want and delete them. And then I mirror the shank. So transform mirror across the y-axis. And all I have to do now is fillet the edge of this ring. So let's remove our lines, delete them. Let's go to solid, fillet edge. Uh, radius of one is good. Pick the two edges. Enter, enter again. And there we go. A very quick, easy way of making a shank that follows uh, the seat that we've made as well. And a nice way of putting prongs on a ring. Very quick, very easy. All right, the next tutorial, I'll go over this again, but we'll add gems and stones in the shank and underneath the seat. All right, I hope you enjoyed it.